So this thing is a serious fly for seriously big fish. And before we get to the tie, I need to say thank you to the man who invented it. No, not Lewis Hendry, but Bosnian angler Renato Apanka, who's the one who gave it to Lewis. Now then, in the vise, we have a size 12 Czech nymph hook. It's barbless and it's already got two tungsten beads on it. The first one is a silver 3.3 millimeter tungsten bead and just behind it is a purple bead. My tying thread is a plain olive. I'm just gonna catch on and lay down a little bed of tying thread and trim off. You're just gonna build up layers of the different materials here there's actually quite a lot that goes on. It goes back a long way on the hook. It's quite a big fly. The next part of the tie is the rib, which is made of plain red fine wire. Again, just catch it in all the way down, just past the bend of the hook. Now, some of this stuff. This is called stretch back. Essentially, it's a five or six millimeter wide olive backing material which you can use for all kind of shrimps and I'm just going to trim off a short length like so and then I'm going to take my scissors and cut a little V in the end to help it make it neat and tidy when I tie it in. This isn't really a difficult fly to tie once you know a few of the little tricks and these are some of the things that will help you. So where I've cut that V into the backing material I'm just going to take the index finger nail of my right hand, I'm a left-handed tire, catch it in like that and just throw a couple of turns underneath there to just secure that to the shank of the hook. What that allows me to do is get a really nice neat and tidy finish here so that it looks really good um, to those enormous frome grayling. Just going to fold the stretch back out of the way couple of turns the other side and then I'm going to introduce some dubbing. I use for my version a plain grey dubbing which is very sort of spiky. Pinch off a good piece and just form a dubbing rope on my thread. You don't want too much dubbing. Part of the reason for that is that this fly is designed to fall very quickly through the water. So you don't want it to be big and bulky because that will slow down the fall. Just slide my dubbing rope up and start to make turns up the shank of the hook. You can see how skinny that is. If it starts to get a little bit too bulky, just give your dubbing rope a twist to shorten it down and make it slightly neater. Put a little bit too much dubbing on there, just gonna pinch a bit off. Just get it nicely up behind that purple bead. Perfect. Now I'm going to bring up my backing material, the shell back as it's called. Don't want to pull it too hard, but I do need to stretch it a little bit so that it goes over the top of the bead. So I pull it over the top of the beads like so, and then pinch with my other hand and just use my tying thread to secure it in place. Didn't quite get that right, so do it once more, like so. A couple of turns of thread just to keep it all neat and tidy, and then trim off the excess. Give it a stretch, and it's nice and neat and tidy. Now I'm going to grab my red wire, and I'm going to use that to form a little hot spot at the back. So just a few turns of that red thread just down the back of the end of that shell back like so. So there's just a little kind of glistening red bit and then I'm just going to form a nice neat and tidy rib. Every time I bring a turn over just straighten up that shell back to make sure it's nicely central. Try and make this as neat as you can and you can see the segmentation looks like a realistic insect. Once I get to the top, just behind that purple bead, a couple of turns of my tying thread, 
and then use an old pair of scissors to trim off the wire. The next part of the process is to add just a little bit more dubbing to the blood heart element of this and this is some very lovely spectra dubbing, sort of a pink tinge to it that looks, well I suppose a little bit like blood. So I'm going to pull off a little pinch, don't want too much of this. Again attach it to my tying thread and what I do at this stage is I grab a red sharpie just colour that last little bit of tying the thread so when I wrap it around the back of that bead it looks nice and neat and tidy in the same colour. Might need a little bit more of that in a second. And then just a few turns of that dubbing. And there we have it, just brush that back. I just need a little bit more Sharpie. And then, simply, a whip finish. A couple of times. And there you go. So you can tie this fly. This is on a 12. You can tie it in a 10. You can also tie it in a 14 or a 16. A cracking fly. Thank you very much, Mr. Hendry. And thank you also to Rene Apanka.